All right, guys, I am going to do a bunch of these questions. Um, I'll start with just the first overview, but just so that if you get stuck on any of them that you can come on here and you can watch and see how to do them, all right? The rules that you have to know for the test, some of the interior angles to get um, each or a single interior angle, if it's a regular polygon, would be to take that sum and divide it by N, the sum of the exterior angles, and then if you have a regular polygon, dividing that sum by n to get a single angle, all right? Um, in terms of naming the polygon, I'm hoping that you know these. So this would be something you can kind of quiz yourself on. But the idea of, you know, a triangle, a quadrilateral, pentagon, you know, hexagon. Um, this is a heptagon or septagon. You can say it either way. Octagon. My favorite, nonagon, decagon, and dodecagon. You should know all of them. I just didn't write them all down. All right, let's hop through a little bit. So when it says find the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon, what I'm expecting is for you to know that that's five sides. And so if I want the sum, then it's 180 times 5 minus 2. And then you're simply doing 180 times 3 that would give you 540 degrees. So if you add up all five angles, that's what you should have. Right? Um, for some of a dodecagon, just make sure you know what side you're plugging in. Find the measure of each interior angle of a regular octagon. Regular means that they're all the same. And so since I want each interior, 180 times n minus 2 over n. And so we can do 180 times 18 minus two, and then divide that by 18, right? You absolutely have to have your calculator for these. Please make sure that it's charged, has new batteries, whatever you might need before you show up to the test in class, all right? So that numerator comes out as 2880 divided by 18. There's gonna be 160, so a single angle and an 18-sided polygon that's regular should be 160. All right, let's keep moving. Um, on to the next page here. Find the measure of, let's see, each exterior angle of a regular nonagon. That's my fave, nine sides. So exterior angle, and I want each one. So the total should add up to 360. To get a single one, you're dividing it by nine. So if you do 360 divided by nine, each exterior angle is 40 degrees. And remember, when you think about like what your shape might look like, if you extend a side, that's the exterior angle right there, all right? Um, I know that's not really an onagon, just play with me here. Uh, let's see, for one, like number nine, let's hop to this. How many sides does the polygon have if the sum of the interior angles is 1440? So interior angle sum. That's what you need to take away from that. So we're talking about that 180 times n minus two. That's what the sum is equal to. So put that 4140 on the left. And then you can solve from here. You can distribute the 180 through, or you could divide the 180 in the first step. It does not matter. As long as you do the algebra correctly, you will get the correct answer. So you'd have to add that 360 on over. So if we take 4140 plus 360, that would give you 180N equaling 4,500. And then divide by 180. So if I take that and divide by 180, I come out with N equals 25. So when it says how many sides, well then 25 sides would be the answer. If I said name it, like you would, the best you could do would just be to say it's a 25 gun. I'm not expecting more than that. All right. Um, let's see. For one like the next one here, just make sure that when you see one like this, you have to figure out what the interior angle sum is first. So since it's one, two, three, four, five, six sides or a hexagon, you have to figure out that 180 times six minus two would give you the sum of the interior angles, and then you could add it up and set it equal to that sum. Right? I think we might have even seen that question before. It might seem a little familiar. All right, for one like number 11, 
these are all exterior angles, which means they add up to 360. So you're setting up this plus this plus this all the way around equals 360. So make sure that as you set up the question that you recognize you're adding all of these and setting it equal to 360. So you always have to think about like, if they're on the outside, it's 360. If they're on the inside, it could change and you have to calculate what that could possibly be. Mm -hmm. um, if we keep moving, let's see, one like maybe 14. Let's jump all the way to the bottom here. 14, they're giving you a parallelogram saying the diagonals AC and BD. Angle one is 45 degrees and angle DCB, so the whole angle is 110. Find the measure of angle two. All right, I like questions like these. There's so many ways in which you can approach it. One thing that I would take a look at is if I didn't have the angle broken up, it's sometimes a little easier to look at. These two angles are consecutive angles, or you can even think of them as same side interiors. So together they have to be 180. So if we do 180 minus 110, that means that this whole angle has to be 70 over here. So in my picture, angles one and two together have to be 70. So since we know that one angle is 45, then you can call this X and add them together to give you 70, or you could say that angle two is 70 minus 45 degrees. You can kind of rationalize it either way. And then when you take that difference, we should be coming out with 25 degrees there. Right. You don't always have to show a ton of work, but you do have to show something because if you get the answer wrong and there's nothing to back up your thought process, you get no credit. So just keep that in mind for the quiz that I'm always looking to give you guys partial credit or full credit, hopefully, but partial credit at least. Right. Um, for one like 16, let's just at least talk about what the breakdown would be here. Let me slide this on over. Uh, you have the diagram where there's a rhombus A, B, C, D. And they're giving you all sorts of stuff. So if you label everything that they've given you, try to make that focus a little better. Um, BC is 9X minus 13. AB is 7X plus 1. ED is 6Z. Um, BE is 7Z minus 5. EC, 9Z minus 5. And then angle. ECD, that's that top angle, that is 4Y plus 1, and then EDC, that's this bottom angle, that is 6Y plus 9. So something you might already notice, they have all different variables here. So you're not going to be able to mix and match these variables, you're going to want to keep them separate. So there should be a relationship with the segments that have the X's, with the segments that have the Z's, and with the angles that have the Y's. So in your space, you might want to you know, break it up into three parts, or maybe you put one here and then the other two down here. But if we start with the sides, the fact that it's a rhombus means all the sides are equal to each other. So since the sides are equal, we can set up an equation based on that. So we can make AB equal to BC. And so 7x plus 1 should be equal to 9x minus 13. If we start rearranging some things, I'm going to kind of multi-step here. I get 14 equals 2x divided by 2. x should be 7. So when it asks you to find the length of AB right here, now we can answer that one. So AB would be 7 times 7 plus 1. So we should have 50 for the length of that side right there. So that means this side's 50, that's 50, and so on, All right? Um, for AC, now you gotta move on to the next variable. So you've got the Zs. When you look at this, any parallelogram bisects the, di or the diagonals bisect each other. So these are equal, these are equal. This diagonal is not the same length as that one. You can look at it and see that even. But these two little pieces are. So we can set B, E, equal to ED because the diagonals are getting bisected. So if we use that, 7Z minus 5 equals 6Z, we could solve this piece of it. So I'm going to subtract the 6Z over, and I'm actually going to add the 5 in the same step. I just don't like dealing with it being negative. 
So I get z equals five, that's it right there. And then that allows us to actually solve for AC because now we know when we look at the diagram that EC, so maybe let's start with that, is nine times seven, or excuse me, nine times five minus five, that would be 40. And then AC is gonna be double that. So if we double 40, that will give us 80. All right, so now we've taken care of AB, AC. We are just down to the angles at this point. So when you look at the picture, something that we need to make sure we recognize is that because it's a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. So this is a nice little right triangle over here. And if we're talking about the angles of any triangle, we know that together they have to equal 180 degrees. So we can use the fact that we've got that 4y plus 1 plus 6y plus 9 plus, whoops, I'll throw it in over there, plus the 90 in the center should equal 180 total. Your other option would be to say, hey, if I take the 90 out of there right now, that these guys equal 90 degrees. That would be fine too. Right? So I'm going to kind of clean it up as I bring it down. So 10y plus 10 is equal to 90 degrees. I can subtract 10, so I get 10y equals 80, and then divide by 10, y comes out to be 8. So to find the measure of angle CDB, so CDB, that's this guy down at the bottom, that would be 6 times 8 plus 9. So 6 times 8 would be 48, and then add 9 to that, that would be 57 degrees. And then you're asked for B, C, D. All right, if I slide up so you can see my picture, B, C, D, ooh, that's this whole angle at the top. If I can at least solve for half of it, then I would just have to double it because those angles are bisected. So I'm going to slide back down so that you can see my work. So angle ECD is equal to 4 times 8 plus 1, which would be 33. And then the measure of angle BCD would just be double that. So that would be 66 degrees. So those are the two parts that we wanted there. All right. That's a good question to, to watch on the video just because it really is a lot of work. A lot of stuff you might have questions about. All right, let's see what's left in the review. Um, left in the review, let's see. Hmm, one like 17, simple, but it's still a good question to look at. It's saying that you've got a rhombus, so that means all sides congruent. They're telling you one of the angles is 120, and then they're asking you for angle RTU. So if we trace that, that's this corner right here. There's a couple of ways to approach it. Um, you could choose to say, hey, I see a little isosceles triangle right here where the angle I want is one of the base angles. That would be one way to look at it. And so since the whole triangle has to be 180, you can go 180 minus 120, and that would leave you with 60. And then you'd have to break it into two equal parts that would give you 30. Another way to approach it would be to say that if this is 120, these two together have to be 180, which would make the whole angle 60, and then it gets bisected by the diagonal. So either way, you get to 30, but just two different thought processes there. Let's finish with a couple questions that we haven't um, done a whole lot with. And that is some trapezoid work. So the very last page here, it's asking us for the triangle, or excuse me, the mid-segment of the trapezoid. And so as a little reminder, mid-segment, you are averaging the bases. So the mid-segment is equal to, I'll say base one plus base two over two. So for one like this, it's just 14 plus 23 divided by two. So 14 and 23 together will give us 37. Chop that in half, and we get 18.5. And yes, it's perfectly fine to get a decimal here. So that's the length of that mid-segment. For the second one, 
if you're going to find the base two and we consider this base one and here's our mid segment, you can either plug in and do it algebraically. So you would say that the mid segment is equal to base one plus, I'm going to call this guy X, base two divided by two. And then you would double both sides. So we get 110 equals 30 plus X. And then you can subtract 30. That would give me, I believe, 80, but it never hurts to double check. Yeah, sometimes my algebra, you never know. All right, so that would leave me 80 over here. The other way that's not as algebraic, let's say, to do it would be to figure out what's the difference from 50 and 35. So if I did 55 minus 30, that's a difference of 25 right there. All right, so it went up 25. That means that from the mid segment to the other base has to go up 25. So if I take 55 and I add 25 to it, 55 plus 25, there's that 80 right there. So it's a nice way to either calculate it or maybe check your answer that you come out with. But it should make sense that that number 55 is in between the two. It shouldn't be getting smaller or doing something goofy like that. All right, those are the end of the ones that I'm going to cover on this review. I hope that was helpful. Um, if there's any other ones, then either ask in class or reach out to me separately. Thanks.